Namaste. This is KV Surya, studying in sixth class, and in this episode of History of Science, we are going to learn about a famous biologist who revolutionized biology by inventing a very famous technique, and his name is Emil von Behring. So Emil 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 von Behring was born on fifteenth March, eighteen fifty-four. He was born in Hamstorf. Kreis Rosenberg, Prussia. His father was a schoolmaster and he had 12 siblings. So his father couldn't afford to send him to a good university and instead he he went on to become a military doctor. Uh, so when he went to become a military doctor, uh, he from 1874 to 1878 he studied in uh, Berlin at Kaiser Wilhelm Academy as a military doctor. So he couldn't learn many things as a military doctor, but but uh, he learned uh, he learned the major techniques in biology. After that, uh, he became. Uh, he became an assistant at the Institute of Robert Koch in the year 1888. He became an assistant at the Institute of Robert Koch. And, and then after that, he had, a, he had an idea. Uh, and he published this idea with Kidasata Shibusaburo in 1890. And, and it became famous for after 1894. So what is this famous idea? So for first understanding this idea, we must, fir we must first learn about our blood. What does it contain? And what is the idea really based on? So first we must see the components of our blood. Our blood contains many things. It, uh, it's not only one substance, it has many, many substances. The main substances in our blood, our blood is mainly made of RBCs or red blood cells, then we have platelets, then we have WBCs or leukocytes or white blood cells, then we have plasma. These are the main components of our blood RBCs, platelets, white blood cells, and plasma. So RBCs, so I am just going to briefly tell about uh, the substances in our blood and I am going to go deep in plasma. So RBCs, uh, RBCs is a, uh, is a cell in our blood which is disc shape and our, our RBCs contain hemoglobin and because of hemoglobin RBCs, in a red, RBCs are in the red color and because of hemoglobin the blood is also in red color. So RBCs um, main job is to transport gases uh, around the body. Uh, that's, that's the main job. They, they just uh, they, they tra transport all the gases around our body. So the main job is transportation, transporting things. And they also transport gases and other substances. And RBC are also important because uh, are important for our blood because they are the ones which uh, t carry the gases, right? And then we have platelets. Platelets cause some clotting. So clotting is when, uh, when you have a cut, you need to prevent the blood from going out. The blood is flowing, and then if it sees the cut, it will go out. To prevent this, the platelets will form kind of a barrier between. This uh, will form like a sheet of kind of thing. So if the blood will go. Uh, uh, and, you, and after they dry up, you get something over there. So, so that they can prevent the loss of blood. I'm not going to go deep in the platelets. I'm just going to briefly tell about it. Then I have white blood cells and leuco or leukocytes. So leukocytes are very important for blood. I'm going to go deep into leukocytes and plasma. They're very important for our blood. This was the main reason why the idea was even why the idea even came to his head. So leukocytes are our immune system. Leukocytes is our immune system. So, uh, 
let's say a bacteria or something enters your body uh, or a germ or something and and it uh, slowly conquers uh, it kills many cells and it will destroy a body to stop that the immune system will destroy the bacteria because this bacteria can uh, occupy cells and uh, make many bacteria out of one bacteria germ so that's why the immune system they, they are like the soldiers of our body they fight germs and bacteria and they are not common known as pathogens the bacteria is not common known as pathogens and now we have plasma plasma is very important for our blood now since we now know what is a blood what is it made up of we, we will now go into plasma and in fact this therapy this idea is known as plasma therapy so plasma has a huge role in this plasma and white blood cells so plasma is very important i'm I, like like how i uh, blood i'm going to write all the components of plasma and explain them uh, a little uh, and explain those components so plasma contains bilirubin transferrin carotenoids uh bilirubin transferrin carotenoids albumin fibrinogen water salt enzymes electrolytes uh then we have globulins plasma contains all these substances so uh, i'm just going to tell briefly about them but we have one important substance in in plasma so plasma contains bilirubin transferrin and carotenoids they we can define them like a whole group because they the main job is to give plasma its yellow color if you see plasma uh, unlike red blood cells and blood it is in a yellow color it's in a, a little thicker and in yellow color this is because of the bilirubin transferrin and carotenoids they give plasma it's yellow color they are uh, they are not, they, they have other functions too because uh, but this is the main function they give it is yellow color then we have albumin albumin is very very important it creates something known as an osmotic pressure i'm not going to tell what is an osmotic pressure but albumin is a substance which makes plasma denser if you see plasma plasma is like something like a thick a very thick uh, liquid but plasma is 91% water so it should be water like but it isn't like that because of albumin albumin makes the plasma dense so by creating something known as an osmotic pressure which i'll not talk about but uh, what is albumin's role in our blood uh, it can help plasma but what is plasma's role in our blood albumin is important in our blood because without albumin our blood would be uh, would leak into our systems Albumin will alb uh, it, it, it will not flow, but it will rush up. But because of albumin, uh, normally blood can go like this. But because of albumin, blood will flow instead of rushing in. And if it rushes, it will cause it, uh, the blood will leak inside our body, where which is known as internal bleeding. That's why albumin is important. It, it, it's what makes our blood denser. That that's why plasma is also so denser. then we have fibrinogen so fibrinogen along with platelets cause the clot so what happens is that uh, when you have a cut the fibrinogen will be exposed to the air and turn into something known as fibrin it is turn into fibrin and the fibrin will form into a net in this net the blood is clot the, the blood is caught and the platelets are also caught when this happens it will form a red kind of thing which is the clot clot this is known as clot without clots our blood the blood will leak into outside that's why fibrinogen and platelets are also very important then we have water salt enzymes and electrolytes 
which are 91 percent water uh, water with these are 91 uh, percent they're, they're in a huge number uh, you know what enzymes are digestive uh, di digestive enzymes uh, uh, digest the food in the same way there are many types of enzymes and they are known as enzy enzymes there's normal water and then we have electrolytes examples of electrolytes are sodium and potassium so it has water salt enzymes and electrolytes uh, and enzymes uh, you, many of you know what enzymes are enzymes are just uh, are just present in the body and help in many processes and at last we have a main substance which is which is the which is which is produced by our immune system then it is globulins the main example immunoglobulins so what are immunoglobulins immunoglobulins are very important to our body but how are they even formed as i told you they are formed uh, they are produced by white blood cells but why do they produce it and what's their function since we now learn about plasma, the plasma's uh, functions are makes blood denser, helps it flow instead of going, has fibronogen, has these enzymes, uh, has these important substances, and then have contained immunoglobulins or known as antibodies. So what are these substances? What are antibodies and what are immunoglobulins? Now, since we have learned about plasma and blood, we're going to dive in into immunoglobulins and learn about how they are formed. So first you need to think like, let's suppose you have a cut on your leg. If you have a cut, uh, your skin is like a fold. And when you have it cut, all the uh, germs will enter the cut. Blood will go out of the cut. So something can come, uh, go inside from outside, right? If you have a cut, like if you have your hand or something, you have a cut. Blood will go, but but then bacteria will also come inside. By by the clot forms, the bacteria will go inside. A uh, bacteria, let's it looks like it's bacteria, virus, or germ, or, or something. So a bacteria which is in the outer environment, in your hand or something. When, they, when you have a cut, it will go inside. It will go inside, and it will it will uh, it, it will damage the body. For this, we have the white blood cells. The white blood cells, uh, and it will hide. So it will only stay in one place. And then our body has white blood cells. I have told you our body has white blood cells or leukocytes. Leukocytes are in different types. They're, they're very, they have different types. Since they should perform one task, get the pathogen out. For getting the pathogen out, what, what, what will you first do? You first find the pathogen. You should first find the pathogen. So what the immune system does is that there is one cell known as the mast cell. So when you have the cut, when you have the cut, but it heals after some time, the, what the, the pathogen will destroy cells. It will not destroy cells, but it will, it will take the cells and it will uh, clone itself. It will use the cell for producing more and the same pathogens. And when it does that, uh, it's in different different places of our body. Our immune system always goes around our body. And when a mast cell will notice this pathogen, suppose this is a mast cell. When it will see this pathogen, it will release a histamine chemical. It's a histamine chemical. It will release this histamine chemical. When it, because it, it's, it's like a guard who will search for these pathogens. Also, you see the pathogen, it will release a histamine chemical. And this chemical will call the immune response, which means that all the soldiers will come to, f to, to fight the pathogen. Uh, so, because there are many pathogens in the body, uh, it will release a histamine molecule with, uh, with some information. And the histamine chemical, uh, sorry, the chemical, the histamine chemical will go to the, uh, another, system, another the soldiers of the system, macrophages, it's just a name, macrophages. 
or you can call it look at the soldiers of the system. So macrophages, they eat, they eat uh, these pathogens. They gobble up the pathogens. But pathogens are being produced by the cells. So what happens is that after you release a histamine chemical, the histamine chemical will go to the macrophages and other parts, and then the macrophages are in two types. The first type will roam around our body. The first type will roam around our body and will search for these things, these pathogens, after it will get the message. And when it will eat the pathogen, it will die. Uh, because it has one, uh, the, the advantage it has, it, it can roam around the body, but then the disadvantage is that it will die. Now the second type are collected at certain places. The places which are likely to get this, to get these uh, these pathogens. So in the second time, it cannot move, but it has a big hands. It can stretch its hands to a certain distance, go and gobble up the pathogen. It can eat about hundred pathogens. But how long will it do this? Our body can't produce macrophages enough to kill all the pathogens. Pathogens are being produced more and more by the cancerous cells. So first, uh, so first we need to. So first, the immune system will stop the cells itself. Then it will kill the cells which are producing this. For this, a particular, uh, uh, particular cells known as the NKC cells, so the natural killer cells, will look at all the can cancerous cells. Cancerous norm normal cells produce uh, also some protein uh, known as an MHC protein, and if it stops producing this protein. The NKC cells, uh, then it's cancerous. It, it is, uh, uh, it, it, it is a bad cell which is producing pathogens. The NKC cell will then kill that cell. It will kill those cancerous cells because if you stop the production of pathogens, the pathogens will decrease. But more and more pathogens were produced, so you can't. So macrophages are being decreased, pathogens are being increased. And for this, and this type of immune system, where this happened, it's known as the innate immune system. But how long will the innate immune system fight? It needs to produce something much more powerful than the macrophages. And for that, we have a second type of immune system known as an adaptive immune system. So, uh, briefly explaining the immune, in the innate immune system. Uh, when a pathogen or some bacteria or some dust or something entered your hand or your, uh, a cut entered your body, then a cell known as a mast cell will look at uh, if a mast cell notices it, it will release a histamine chemical which will call the macrophages or the soldiers which will gobble up these pathogens. With these pathogens will occupy the cells and use this and use the cells for the production of themselves. And now uh, oh, so they have a special thing. The NKCs, macrophages, mass have a special thing. They can store their memory and send their memory to other cells. So after they eat some pathogens, their memory of what they encountered. Uh, when they eat a pathogen, they must know how many, what substances it has. So what substances it has briefly testing what substances it has and send the response to the second type of immune system. The NKC cells will tell uh, how the cancerous cells work, uh, how it was occupied. The macrophages will tell uh, what substances it had, some substances it will tell. Then the mass cells will tell what it has seen. All this information will go to the second type of in the immune system known as an adaptive immune system. It should produce something much more powerful than macrophages. Macrophages are decreasing. So the, the advantage in adaptive immune system is that uh, uh, they get more information. Known, some cell known as a dendritic cell produces the most of the information. Uh, how to produce information is they just have a mass cell, they roam around the body and they find, so if, if you notice the pathogen, the pathogen has these spikes. These spikes are the only thing which are important. If I delete these spikes, 
from the pathogen, the pathogen will die. But the pathogen will produce more and more spikes and lose this spike. But if you delete all of them together at once, then the pathogen will die. That's why the, the immune system notices these spikes. If these spikes or these things are there, it will create an immune response and call the it will release a histamine chemical. That's why these spikes, you need to destroy these spikes. For destroying these spikes, you need to know what is there in these spikes. It's like how, let's say someone is punching at you, you keep your hand to stop him. So you're creating a defense, uh, defense response to what he does. In the same way to what chemicals it has, what, uh, what chemicals the immune system should produce to destroy these things and to kill the pathogen. After then, the dead cells, after each pathogen will produce more and more and new uh, antigens. This part is known as an antigen. And will leave all the old ones. Then the cell will take this antigen and send it to the and send it to this immune system. This immune system will get a lot of information. Then when you get that much information, it should create something opposite. Let's suppose a, 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 the before example, someone is punching it. You give your hand to stop it. You create You're creating a defense response to what he does. In the same way, they should create a def uh, the that immune system knows how what are, what things are there in the pathogen. So they should create a defense response to what the pathogen does. That's why after about three or four days, in in the varies in many viruses, but after many days, it will it will. It will uh, the adaptive immune system will produce, uh, you can think of them as very powerful, which can destroy these antigens and so destroy the pathogen. It will produce something which looks like this. It will produce something which looks like this. It will produce more and more of this. And when it will produce these, these are like a defense response to what the pathogen is. So there's a pathogen over here. Uh, the, this thing known as an antibody is known as an antibody will lock on to these things it will lock on to these uh, moment destroy these pathogens and all the information I've gathered from the uh, virus bacteria or something else they will send the information to the adaptive immune system and the adaptive immune system will create a different response to what this thing is uh, uh, made up of for the first four days it will only get the information from the mast macrophages and 
the NKC cells, right? It will uh, it will only uh, get the information from antigens after some days when more antigens are uh, are falling off. Uh, and with this information, they should produce, they should decrease the pathogens. So they create uh, some antibodies known as IgM antibodies, which are not that powerful. So if I have a cold, I right now have IgG antibodies because IgM antibodies are not that powerful. Because they got some, they have some information about IgM antibodies. They can decrease the power of these pathogens. But IgG more powerful. It can completely destroy those pathogens. So there are two types, IgG and IgM. So this is the immune system. I hope you understood the immune system. And so, um, oh, so if I have these antibodies against the particular virus, uh, if I get the virus again, I will be able to, you know, uh, simply destroy the virus just because of the information, the memory reasons memory pieces have. But uh, after it will destroy those pathogens, it, the immune system will keep some, it will create, uh, even after it destroy those pathogens, it will create uh, some, uh, you know, millions and millions of antibodies again and it will store them because if there's a viral attack, it, uh, the time, it, uh, uh, they hope that it will not take much more time to destroy it. So it will create these antibodies and keep them, uh, keep them in the plasma because they can't keep it in the RBCs. RBCs that's not their function. RBCs are cells which, which we can't keep it. But WBCs, no, WBCs are always creating the antibodies. Platelets, no. Platelets, the main function of is are clotting. So not platelets. But the only thing which can be kept in is plasma. Pla in plasma? These antibodies can be stored, and if there is, and since plasma is mixed in the blood, if there is a virus attack, the plasma will release these antibodies to destroy that virus. So, uh, I have these uh, immunoglobulins or antibodies in my inside my plasma. Let um, suppose about five people or my friends. This one virus in which uh, me and some four other people got the virus. I survived the virus by creating immuno, uh, immuno, uh, uh, antibodies but the other uh, person was severe with the virus. Then can I take my antibodies which I created and give it to them? I, I, I created about you know, let's say 5 million antibodies. Maybe I can give them uh, 2 million antibodies out of 5 million antibodies to the person so that I can Cure it, and I still have three million antibodies, so it's enough. This is the idea Emil and Derek had. He thought he thought that um, if one person had a virus, he was cured with the virus, and he gave antibodies. AB which means antibodies, he created antibodies, another person has the same virus but no antibodies, only pathogens. Then uh, how can I take my antibodies and give it to that person so that he can be cured? For that I need to take plasma because I can't extract antibodies, antibodies are so small, it's impossible to extract them. It can be extracted if you want to, but it takes a lot of time. It's a big process. So uh, I don't know if, if it even works, but I can take the plasma from his body, which contains the antibodies, and give it to him. This can work. He thought of it, as, uh, he thought of it. and then he published his article. He worked till 1892. The experiments failed. From 1894, it worked. The theory worked. So. What happens when you inject these plasma, this plasma? Nothing happens with the other substances, albumin and other substances. Where, where the, since the virus is everywhere and the immune system is also everywhere and all the memory pieces and the memory pieces are present are also present everywhere in, small, in big numbers. 
when I release these antibodies, this antibody, what is the main function of the antibody? It destroy this virus, destroy this particular virus. That's its main function. If you look at this virus, this virus came again, uh, so it will go and destroy this virus. The memory T cells will look at this information and will go to the B cells, it will give the information, they will take one antibody, they will clone the antibody, they will bring more and more antibodies and they will destroy the virus. So this is how it works. This is uh, and and this is how uh, his idea worked. So, it's, it's actually a good idea. It's, it, it was possible. There were proofs that it was possible. Somehow, because of uh, their uh, their problems, uh, you know what? Because of their mistakes in doing the in doing this therapy perfectly. They had, it did not work, but from 1894, it was it was a great success. Uh, it uh, so this was how it worked. If I send those antibodies, the body will look at those antibodies uh, and see that it, it can destroy these pathogens, produce more of them, and send them to destroy the pathogens. And this person can again do plasma therapy to another person, and that person after he is cured, he can do it to another person. Uh, so. Uh, this theory worked and uh, so uh, this process was known as convalescent plasma therapy. Today I am going to show you the therapy uh, after I tell you a bit about the therapy. So it, may, it basically means taking the plasma from one person who has the antibody to another person to cure him of his disease, of his virus or something. And uh, it, it ranges in three types or, or some other types. The first type, uh, the first type is that the t let's suppose um, I am, I have one so plasma has many substances, and I have a deficiency in any one of the substances. And I need some substance in the substances. So the, what they do is that they take my plasma, they add that particular substance, and they send it back in. So if I have class, my plasma, one substance is, in, is miss, missing. They take my plasma, they take, they send that substance into my plasma and send it back to me. And the second type of therapy is that. Um, I have more of the substance, I have more of the particular substance, uh, then they will take my plasma, they will take some, uh, they will take that substance, if there is excess of the substance uh, and it is dangerous, they will take it out and they will give it to another person who is in need of this substance. So one person has a deficiency of one particular substance and I have more of the particular substance, they will take my plasma. They will extract that substance and give it to the person who is deficient. This is the second type. The third type is that they take my plasma and give it to another person for on antibodies. For as I told you before, this is the main type which is normally happening uh, and f with people with same blood groups. So they take my plasma and people and give it uh, give it uh, give it to him or her uh, who, who is in need of antibodies for a particular virus. So, this therapy worked and he won the 1901 Nobel Prize, which was the first Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. In 1900, the Nobel Foundation was formed and in 1901, he won the first Nobel Prize. So, uh, this, this was the therapy and um, so how did they actually extract the plasma from the blood? Somebody extracted it from the blood. And now uh, I'm going to show you a demonstration of, uh, of extracting the plasma from the blood. I have some blood. I'm going to extract the plasma from the blood to the machine. Right now we have some other machines. But this is the ma machine which was there before. So I have this machine. 
Um, uh, it has. Uh, so I have this blend, and now, uh, 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 so I'm gonna keep it in the machine, and I need to wait for 10 minutes, and it's in 3,000 RPM. So after 10 minutes, uh, hopefully, uh, let's hope that the plasma will uh, be separated from the bread. So I should spin this and say that it's an optimum. So let me turn on the machine. So I'm spinning this machine at 3000 RPM.
Yes, there you can see the plasma. The plasma is separated from the blood. You see it, our plasma. If you see closely, there uh, we, we can also see a, a white layer and a lightly red layer, which is the platelets. But if I, uh, so, so this is the RBC, this is the blood, uh, this is the, the slightly, uh, sli the slightly red color area is the platelets. If you see uh, much more closely, there is a white color area, which is the YWBC or the, uh, you know, the memory cases and memory B6 are also stored, uh, but they're in blood, right? So it will be separated and we have a plasma over here. If you see plasma, uh, if I didn't keep it completely for 10 minutes, so we got less plasma. But normally plasma is in 55% of our blood. It's a huge number. So uh, it's, it's actually higher than uh, uh, red blood cells. So this is our plasma. It's remarkable how we did this. How we did the plasma in a home. If I just turn it over, it's completely mixed. So I will not turn it over. I'll show it last one last time. So we got it like this. We got our plasma in this way. It's remarkable how we uh, extracted the plasma from a machine like this. So plasma therapy is important uh, it, when viruses attack, you know, uh, much more stronger viruses attack and we weren't able to find the vaccine very quickly. During those times, the plasma therapy is very important because uh, you can save many lives. You know, if you some may, many some people can die during the virus, but you can save many lives. Uh, so after he did the plasma, before he did the plasma therapy, in 1888, he in the, uh, after he the plasma therapy, he became a professor at the Marburg University of Hygiene and one bearing. And and uh, and and it was a uh, and uh, it was a uh, it's, it's a revolution because it saved many lives during uh, during the during many viruses strong viruses are uh, killing people. So what are some of the viruses that can be cured with plasma? There are many viruses which can cure, but I I tell some important viruses. Uh, Um, diseases uh, they are we have Blaine Barry syndrome syndrome and there are only there are only there are some of the important ones uh, HIV related neuropathy We have uh, a myasthenia gravis. Uh, we have toxic epidermal nec uh, necrolysis or TEN. And then we have diphtheria so uh, diphtheria was the first virus which uh, diphtheria uh, worked with plasma therapy and toxins were formed uh, with diphtheria and so diphtheria is actually a bacteria sorry diphtheria uh, mainly killed many children uh, it killed many children so he's also known as the savior of children because of this and uh, this is a therapy which is right now helping people survive during the COVID-19 period. FDA recommended it and in India we are also using it. So we must, uh, this is actually uh, a very great discovery which is saving many lives. So, um, uh, so, so we must thank everyone Baron for this great discovery. Uh, or, or the plasma therapy for the plasma therapy, and we must also uh, thank all the great doctors who worked and uh, improved the plasma therapy. This is KV Sivasoria, uh, and thank you for watching.